Would you love to dive deeper into Kendra's chart now that you've gone through episode six and really gotten to be a fly on the wall with our conversation about what it is to be an empowered projector? I thought it would be fun for us to go over her human design chart together and do a really high level overview of some of the gates and some of the planets and her profile and all of that good stuff. Welcome to Unjaded. I'm your host, Vicki Dixon. This is a podcast with a human design spin on building the life, the relationships, and the business that you were made for. Let's dive in. I thought it would be really fun today to just go over Kendra's chart with you a little bit, to do a little bit of a deeper dive into our deep dive episode with Kendra Woods. So Kendra, as you know, is a projector. And as I mentioned in episode six, she is the most empowered projector that I know. I learned so much from Kendra in the coach mastermind that I was a part of, the human design coach mastermind with Karen Curry Parker. Kendra is one of the coaches there and she just stands in her power and in her wisdom and her ability to guide so much as a projector. So in episode six, we talked with Kendra about the openness in her chart. She only has two centers defined. So I'm not going to go into great detail here about the centers in her chart, but I thought we would cover her profile line. And remember that your profile is who you're here to be. It's the role that you play in your life. So we're going to just go over her profile, which is a 6-2 profile. And I thought we would go through some of the planetary placements of the gates because that's kind of a fun place to start. You can go back to episode six if you want to hear Uh, about Kendra's lived experience as a projector. But for the purposes of this, we're just going to go over the gates, the profile line, and a little bit about the channel and the centers that she has defined, okay? So maybe have your own chart handy. If you're not driving or walking or doing something like that, have your own chart handy or just in in your mind's eye kind of see a little bit of your chart. And I do know that that takes a little while to have your own design memorized. And I'm going to put memorized in air quotes because There are still times where I have to be like, oh, where's that gate again? Which planet is that in again? I know that I have that, but I know that I have it twice. Where does it show up for me? Just understand that you're always going to be learning about your design. You're going to be unpacking it for the rest of your life. And every little bit that you uncover will guide you to something else to uncover. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing about human design. So Kendra is a splenic projector. And we'll talk about what that means in case you have that authority and you're not really sure what it means. So the spleen speaks once. The spleen is where intuition lives. It is an awareness center, the oldest awareness center in the human design body graph. And it's also a center for primal fear. So we see a lot of underlying fears living here. We see a fear of inadequacy, a fear of the future, a fear of the past, a fear of authority or rules, a fear of failure, a fear of death, a fear of not finding your purpose and a fear of being judged, a fear of authority. (laughs) So just a little bit of stuff in that spleen center, right? The splenic authority is interesting because it speaks once. So I'm going to contrast this to sacral authority. If you're someone with sacral authority, you can ask your sacral a question. You can ask your sacral to respond and get an answer. And you can keep asking, right? You can keep refining the question. We do this in sacral sessions where you come in and we just keep refining the questions until we get to the right response from you for the situation. The spleen is not like that. The spleen speaks once and never again. So it's like that little voice in your head that says, turn left here. And you have no idea why. Look down. That guy's creepy. Move away. That kid's in trouble. Help. Those little tiny voices, and it does it can be something so simple as your keys are in the bowl. It doesn't have to be something dramatic, but it speaks once. It's, it's that little voice that you think of as your intuition, and then it's gone. You never hear it again. So splenic authority can be a really difficult thing to grasp, to grab hold of, to really use in your life, because you have to get really good at listening to your body and listening to the cues that the universe is giving you. And it's also a great gift, right? All of human design is a gift. That's what splenic authority is. And that's what Kendra has. You may share that as well. She also has a defined root center. uh, And the root center is often known as the center for business. It's a pressure center. It's the pressure for adrenaline in the human design body graph. 
So she talked a little bit about this in our episode, in our conversation together, she talked a little bit about this. And it really is a huge driver. The channel that she has defined, she has one channel defined in her entire design, and it is the channel 3254. So it's all about ambition and endurance. And I just noticed that 32 is defined for her twice. So she's got that both on the unconscious side and the conscious side. So this is a big driver in her chart. And I want you to remember this. If you're a projector or if you know a projector, love a projector, not all projectors are created in exactly the same way. There's nuances to every single design. And I really want you to remember that not every, not all of any type are created the same. So Kendra is what we call a motorized projector because the root center is a motor. So she has a motor defined, even though she has all of this beautiful openness in her chart and her, her chart is linked in the show notes, if I didn't say that already, even though she has all of this openness in her chart, she does have a defined motor. And that makes you more able to just go, go, go and do the things that need to be done. It doesn't mean that you should be going and going and going and going and going as a projector, but it enables you to have the power of that motor on your side. And this motor that she has is particularly well-defined. It has five gates defined. Five of the nine gates are defined for her. And again, this channel, this one channel that she has is endurance and ambition okay and she talked about this in our episode how driven she was in her corporate life how she didn't understand that she needed rest how she always felt like she wasn't quite as good as everyone else or she wasn't quite doing as well as everyone else because she was getting worn out and getting burned out and that's because her sacral center was begging her to rest but she just didn't know her human design yet so a motorized projector is going to naturally have a little more energy, a little more ability to push through than a non-motorized projector. So that's one of the differences that we see here, that even though she has seven centers, white, undefined, open, she has one of the two centers that she has defined is a motor. So let's talk about her profile before going through some of the gates. So she's a 6-2. Six, 6 is a role model and 2 is the hermit. I share this 2 profile line. I'm a 2-4. So I have a lot of lived experience in it. So we'll talk about the six first because that's on our conscious side. It's energy she's probably more aware of. Six line profiles are here to be role models, but they don't go through their whole life as a role model. The first 30 years of life, they kind of behave like a third line profile in that they experiment with all the things. They experience all the things. They are definitely experiential learners. They have to learn by doing. And they're doing that in order to share it with the rest of us, in order to share their experiences, their lessons with the rest of us. So third line profiles and six line profiles in the first 30 years of life, probably hear lots of times, oh my God, do you really have to do that? Can you not learn from anyone else's mistakes? Can you not learn from all the mistakes that you've made in the past? You're really going to try that again? Uh, what did I hear the other day? I can't remember who said it, but I, I, someone in the human design world said, move fast and break things. That's basically the, uh, the mantra of the third line or the sixth line in the first 30 years of life. So they're experiencing everything in the first 30 years. Then from 30 to 50, we see six line profiles really integrating those lessons. We call it on the roof. And I actually spoke with a six line profile. I did a reading for a six line manifester a couple of weeks ago. And I explained to her that we call it on the roof in human design world. And she said, oh my gosh, that is exactly how I feel. I feel like I'm on the roof. I feel like I can see all of this stuff that's going on. And I feel like I'm shouting into the abyss because nobody wants to hear what I have to say. And I can see all of the things that are going wrong. And I was like, wow, isn't that interesting? Because that's not my lived experience, right? She said, I actually do feel like I'm on the roof. We call it on the roof because it's like they're integrating all of these lessons and they're looking at everyone else. I don't want to say down on, but they're looking at everyone else and seeing where we're kind of going off course. So that's 30 to 50. And then from 50 and up, they step into the role model phase. So that role model phase is where they really are modeling for the rest of us. This is how it's done. That's the six line profile. It goes in three phases. The second line profile, which Kendra has on her unconscious side, this is my conscious profile. The second lines are the naturals. We just are good at the things that we're good at and we don't even know that we're good at them. It's not until we're with the right people that they just call our gifts out of us. The second line is known as the hermit because 
We need to hermit away. And I'm telling you, after familiarizing myself with my design and truly living my design for the last three, four years at the time of this recording, I can tell you that I can feel it in my body now and where it used to be something I'm introverted as well. And where it used to be something that I almost apologized for and felt like was wrong with me that I needed to take this time away, I would also try to make myself push through it as needed. Now I actually hermit away. Consciously, I hermit away. I take the time to get completely away from everyone because I know that I will be called out when I'm ready to share the gift that has come from that hermiting time. I may go to my cottage. I may sit in my office and... I may go to a hotel. I've been known to do that. Go to a hotel for two or three days and dive in and do a course, run through a whole three month course in three or four days. That is hermiting away for me. That feels good for me as a second line profile. So a second line profile has a gift or gifts, something or some things that they are really, really good at. And oftentimes they can't recognize this in themselves. And Kendra and I had a conversation around this after the episode, actually, about how this second line profile shows up for us. And I don't know if you remember from the episode, but she talked about her daughter being a second line profile and really needing, her daughter's also a projector, so really needing to be recognized, really needing to have those gifts called out of her. So that is how it is with a second line. So that's who Kendra is here to be in life. She's here to be a role model with natural gifts that will be called out of her when it's time to share. That's what I was gonna say about the second line. The second line also has a bit of a projection field. So a projector with a second line or a fifth line, fifth line also has projection, projection field, they're going to have more (laughs) projector-ishness, if that's a word, than someone who has a different profile line, perhaps. So sometimes with the second line, there can be you know projection onto you from other people or you can project onto people and it's just the way it is it's just something to just understand about yourself if you have a second line profile so planetary placements kendra has actually a lot of repeating themes in her chart now in episode six we talked about her gate 21 because it appears four times in her chart and it's also her conscious son and she had said that all of them are six lines So, you know, when you're at the very beginning of your human design journey, you're not going to really go into the weeds of what the line for each gate is. That's kind of a little bit more of an advanced step. But Kendra did mention that all of these 21 gates are in, all of these gate 21s are in the sixth line. And remember that the sixth line is the role model. So the gate 21 is control. It's all about control. And Kendra talked about this in our conversation, how this has been a lifelong lesson for her. And here she's, she's here to role model what control can look like. She's here to role model wisdom around control. This gate 21 for her is in an open center. It's a hanging gate. It's going to play out for her in relationships a lot. Her lessons are going to come through her relationships around this gate 21. So that's a big theme in her chart. Gate 48 repeats for her three times. And gate 48 is coming off of the spleen. So it's in a defined center. So she has access to this energy all the time. It's consistent, sustainable energy. Gate 48, we also talked about in our conversation together. I share this with her. I have the whole channel, the 4816, which goes from the spleen to the throat. And this is the channel of talent. Gate 48 is all about going really deep into the well and getting really wise about something. You're always going to go deep into an issue. It is depth. It is wisdom. It is learning. These are people with this Gate 48 who, you know, we need all of the certifications. (laughs) We're going to just sign us up for every single certification that's going because we want it. And Kendra has this as a big theme in her chart because it shows up three times. It's um, one of the places that shows up is in her Jupiter, which is her blessings. Another place that it shows up is in her Saturn, which is her challenge. So these are going to be things that play out for her as a challenge and as blessings. It's also her conscious earth. So when you look at the right hand side, the black side of the chart and you see the numbers, the earth sign is the second sign down. That's 48 for her. So she's going. this is going to make her feel grounded. This is the energy that makes her feel grounded. It makes her feel really solid to be able to go deep on something, to be able to be wise about something. And again, like the chart, we don't just look at one piece of the chart ever. We look at all the pieces together for the nuances. She's a projector. She's here to be wise. She's here to be a guide. She energetically holds the potential of the planet. 
She has seven centers open or undefined. And in our openness is where we go to school. It's where we're wise. It's where our lessons live, where we have the opportunity to be wise, where our lessons live. So you see how all of these things just layer on, right? And this is the energy that grounds her in this gate 48. So other themes, I'm not going to go through gate by gate by gate her entire chart, but some other things that um, are themes for her are gate 33, the gate of privacy, gate 19, the gate of sensitivity. This is in her south node. So it's her natural genius. You know, the, the natural theme of your life until you're about 40 is a lot, has a lot to do with your south node. And this is gate 19. Gate 19 is sensitivity. Highly sensitive people will often have this gate. People who can communicate with animals or who are very sensitive to animals. People who have sensitivity to texture or taste will often have this gate 19. Uh, other themes in her chart. Gate 11, the gate of ideas. I love, 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 love this gate, but I'm guessing that she has a lot of pressure around ideas or at least before she deconditioned. I know she's been at this a long time, but this gate of ideas, a gate of being a steward of ideas. So it's not that the ideas are for her or for you if you have this gate defined. It's that you are a steward of the ideas. You're holding the ideas until the right person comes along who that idea is for. Gate 18 is a theme, and this also was in a prominent place in her chart, I believe. Oh, it was her Saturn, her conscious Saturn, which Saturn is your greatest challenge. And uh, Gate 18 is all about corrections. It's about seeing what needs to be corrected. And that can be a little bit of a rub, right? Because that is projected energy. It's energy we don't always love to have things pointed out to us that need to be corrected. But the beauty of this gate is that it is correcting things so that there can be joy. It is correcting things so that there can be the fullest expression of joy and that things can be improved for the whole. Uh, there can be also a little bit of a fear or a pushback on authority with this gate as a hanging gate. Gate two is a theme in her chart. Gate two is receptivity. It's the most yin energy, the most feminine energy in the human design body graph. This is her Chiron. So you don't see it in her body graph per se, but it's her Chiron. So we go through Chiron sometime around 48 to 52 years of age. We go through Chiron and Chiron is known as the wounded healer. So there's great opportunity for healing. I think it's beautiful how human design goes with these patterns of our lives that we have always thought were midlife crisis or, or whatever we think they are. But you know, your first Saturn return is around the age 29, 30. And so your Saturn will be listed on your chart. It's um for Kendra here, it's gate 48 and 18. But you go through your first Saturn return when you're around 29 or 30. And it's really intense. And you're meant to learn the lessons or the challenges of your Saturn. And whatever you don't get is coming back around when you're about 58. And now remember that these are planetary returns. So the energy is going to stay with you for quite some time. It's going to be, you know, a year or two around that. But again, around uh, 58, you have a second Saturn return. So you get to deal with this challenge again. Uranus opposition is late 30s, early 40s. Again, where we sometimes see a crisis of some sort happening, right? And we chalk it up to just life or whatever, but it's actually a planetary return in your chart. And what that means is that that planet is returning to the place it was at the time of your birth in your chart. So you've got your Saturn return at 29 or 30 and again at around 58. You've got your Uranus opposition at um, late 30s, early 40s. And Uranus is really um, a place where you expect the unexpected. Something happens that you don't quite expect. It's where you're different from everybody else. That's a little bit of what Uranus represents. Uh, and then at 50, you have your Chiron, the wounded healer. So you have like every decade, you have something that you're dealing with. And we just chalk it up to a midlife crisis or whatever it is that we chalk it up to. But there, there are actually reasons for this. Planetary returns, which are absolutely beautiful. And they give us great chances to work through these lessons. Okay, and then gate 32 for her is another theme, which is all about endurance. And gate 14 is a beautiful gate and it repeats for her. And gate 14 is known in the I Ching as possession in great measure. It's a gate of being able to re this is part of my incarnation cross. So I love this gate. It's what I'm grounded in. It's my conscious earth. 
And it's all about being able to have the resources and resource the tribe. It's a beautiful, beautiful gate, This the energy of this gate. I love it. I'm, I love that she also has the two to complete the channel for her and her Chiron. I didn't get that in my chart. So I have human design envy there. So let's just go through really briefly some of the significant planetary placements that I haven't mentioned. I know I've mentioned some of them. And uh, then we'll close this up. So gate 21, again, we see gate 21 control as her conscious moon. And the moon is what drives you. Gate 36 is her Mercury. And gate 36 is evil Knievel energy. It is, uh, Ra always talked about it as being, you know, the saying all's well that ends well. He talked about gate 36, excuse me, being all's well that ends. It's like people with this gate are here to have the experience. And remember that she also had that in the first 30 years of her life as a six line profile. So really here to have the experience, to experience all of the things and to experience all of the deep emotions of that. This is in an undefined center for her. It's a hanging gate. So she may find that this plays out in relationship for her and um, that the, the energy isn't always consistent there for her. Venus, her Venus relationship theme. Again, we have that gate 21, the uh, control in it's also her Mars. And Mars is where we experience youth, youthful lessons. It's also kind of a driver in us and it is how we do the things that we do. And then her Jupiter. So we talked about her Jupiter already, I think being in that gate 18 as well as her Saturn. So these are just some of the kind of prominent gates in prominent places in her chart. And I'm just, that's on the conscious side. I'm just going to flip over to the unconscious side for just a minute. And we'll just do the top two. The, so the first gate is going to be the conscious sun and the next one is, sorry, unconscious sun. And the next one is going to be the unconscious earth. So her conscious sun is in gate 54 and gate 54 is ambition and drive. It's often said that our greatest conditioning will come in that unconscious sun, that it's energy that's always there for us. It's part of our incarnation cross, part of our, like the movie of your life is your incarnation cross. So her ambition and drive is really in a prominent place in her chart. And it's where she'll have a lot of conditioning around that. And then what grounds her is her uh, unconscious earth is a lot about new beginnings uh, gate 53 is all about new beginnings, the starting energy. And actually Kendra talked about that on our call that, you know, give her anything to start and she loves to start it, but she doesn't so much love the finishing. And I feel the same. I don't know if you can feel her on that, but I definitely feel the same. She also has gate 60 in her root center, which is a hanging gate for her because it doesn't have the three defined. And it's all about innovation. And she has gate 41, which is fantasy and expectation and there can be a restlessness there there's a lot of places where you can see this starting energy in her chart and again i'm just going to go back over and over and over and over again to the fact that we can never look at one piece of the human design puzzle because when we do that we miss the gold and when we can like zoom out and go oh yeah this plays with that and that energy matches that and if i learn this then I get to experience that. And it's all of these pieces working together that make your human design blueprint so beautiful and such a beautiful way to discover yourself. When you look at all of it, instead of just stopping with, I'm a projector. I mean, can you imagine if my conversation with Kendra was just about, you're a projector, so you must be very tired. Because if you're a projector listening to this, you've heard that before, right? That is the thing that drives most of my projector clients absolutely crazy is that they're always treated like they will never have any energy. And that's not the case. There's so much more to the conversation than that. If you would like to take this further and have a really deep dive, this was just a little, what have we been 25 minutes? This was just like a little kind of overview of the chart. We didn't get into the weeds on this at all because, you know, you don't want to listen to this for an hour and a half. But if you would like to do your own human design reading and really go into the gifts that make you you, go into the places where you've been taken away from yourself, where you've been conditioned to believe you're something that you're not, look at some of the pitfalls, some of the patterns that you'll fall into that are keeping you stuck, then I would invite you to schedule a human design reading. The link is in the show notes to be able to go and book that. 
And uh, there are some excellent free resources there for you as well in the show notes, as well, along with a picture of Kendra's chart for you. If you haven't yet listened to episode six, you might want to go back and do that because it will give you some context for this episode. But the two of them together, I think, make a really beautiful deep dive into this really powerful projector who is standing in her design. That's what it's all about, right? It's all about remaining unjaded and remembering who you are. Until next time, when we talk about manifestors, the next episode is all about manifestors. 